and welcome. You're watching Tech24. I'm Julia Seeger. In this edition, Silicon Valley CEOs slam President Trump's immigration ban. They say it's un-American and it could directly affect their business, which relies heavily on foreign skilled immigration. Beyond words, some are now even taking action. And we'll test Echo by Milibu. The famous Scandinavian brand has developed a smart connected mirror set to improve your daily morning routine. But first, we start with this historic win. For the first time, artificial intelligence developed by Carnegie Mellon University has defeated the world's best professional poker players. It happened at a casino in Pittsburgh during a 20-day marathon competition. The scientist who developed this AI, dubbed Labratus, insists the sizable win is statistically important and not simply a matter of luck. Now let's take a listen to what these poker pros had to say about their AI opponent. AI this year, Labratus, is quite a bit better than uh, Claudico in 2015. It made some pretty large mistakes at times. You don't see that with Labratus. It's much more calculated and much more tough. You really have to pry every chip you can out of Labratus's hands, and you have to do it with skill, not counting on his mistake. The most surprising thing is its ability to adjust, its ability to just learn every day and get better. It's been taxing on us to, to try to find weaknesses, especially after it just seems to be able to adjust to us. And it's now time to welcome our very own Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello and welcome, Dan. Hello, Julia. Why is this such a significant achievement? Well, first, you need to understand what poker essentially is. It is a game of incomplete information. Unlike chess, where all pieces are on board and a computer can calculate by knowing what the opponent does. But in poker, you don't know what hands your opponent is holding. So you can't just keep on playing with aces in hand or kings in hand. You have to bluff to win. You have to counter bluff you know, your opponent in order to uh, garner large amount of uh, chips like this uh, program did. It so you garnered, have to adapt in real time. Absolutely. It garnered more than 1.7 million chips combined more than the other four pros who were very good at the game. So this essentially was a heads up match. Heads up is a one on one match against each professional. So uh, in this case, there were four players. This was done over a period of 20 days. Around 120,000 hands were played. So that's quite a staggering amount of hands for the uh, computer program to play something it didn't it didn't learn the strategy from human players. Instead, it just understood the, the rules of the game and it started learning on its own by putting As it in, was playing. Yeah, by putting by trial and error. So it put in around, I think, 15 million computational core hours, and it was assisted in doing so by a supercomputer, which was connected to this artificial intelligence algorithm, or on which this algorithm ran. So this computer's uh, uh, specifics are quite, quite mind-boggling. So it is, uh, the computing power is, I think, not computing power, but it was 7,250 times faster than, our, uh, high, than a high-end laptop, and its memory was 17,500 times more than the normal laptop used. So, in terms of computing power, it was enormous, and as you can see, you can see the results. And but at the same time, it is that's why it's significant because, as I said, right. it's a game of incomplete information. Right. And now, it's not the first time that a machine has outsmarted humans at games. That's right. Around 20 years ago, there was a massive, uh, how do you say, earthquake or massive uh, sensation because uh, the Deep Blue, the uh, the machine uh, Deep Blue that was made by IBM, it uh, defeated Garry Kasparov arguably one of the world's strongest chess players. And till then, no machine had defeated a grandmaster or a world champion, uh, for that matter, in a classical format. So they played more than one, class, uh, more than one classical games, and Deep Blue managed to outwit uh, Gary, Gary Kasparov, and that was a great sensation. And that was not the only instance in which the machine had outsmarted human beings at a game. Uh, I think around two years ago, uh, Google's uh, DeepMind uh, algorithm or the software, it managed to beat one of the best Go players. Uh, uh, you know, in, I think it was a five match, five game match in which uh, the machine won four one. So that was also quite a significant achievement in progress of artificial intelligence. Now this is really a milestone for artificial intelligence. How will the technology be used elsewhere? Well, this program or this software is not specific uh, to poker alone. The algorithm can be extended to other applications like. Uh, I don't know, military, there are cyber, there's cyber security, or even something uh, in which there's misleading or incomplete information like negotiations. When you're negotiating, maybe, I don't know, to buy a car, so you can have an application on your phone which 
you know, which negotiates with uh, the dealer, with the car dealer, and you get the best price, provided, of course, the dealer also doesn't have a similar program with him. So right. there'll be a war between two machines. But yes, this goes, extends beyond uh, just book or in any scenario where there is incomplete or misleading information. Thank you, Dan. We're going to move on now to a whole other story. Uh, the tech community in New York and Silicon Valley has turned out en masse to oppose President Trump's executive order to restrict immigration from seven Muslim-majority countries. And CEOs of top Silicon Valley companies have decided now is the time for the sector to speak out. They say the move is un-American and it could directly impact their competitive quest for talent, as Shirley Sitbon explains. Half of America's startups were created by immigrants. That's one reason why Donald Trump's executive order barring people from seven countries left the industry in shock. Apple CEO Tim Cook told employees in a memo, it is not a policy we support. Apple would not exist without immigration. The company's co-founder Steve Jobs was the son of a Syrian immigrant. Netflix CEO Steve Hastings called the president's move un-American. Airbnb said it would provide free housing for its employees stranded abroad, while Uber said it would compensate its own drivers. Many tech bosses say that banning foreigners is not only unethical, it's also counterproductive. Mark Zuckerberg wrote on Facebook, expanding the focus of law enforcement beyond people who are real threats would make all Americans less safe. His company, like other technology giants, is directly harmed by the decision. Microsoft and Google alone already have over 200 employees already targeted by Trump's executive order, but hundreds of computer experts may soon be under threat too. The industry recruits the world's best engineers through a special visa program, H-1V, which Trump may soon revise. Several tech CEOs hope to convince Trump his plans are bad for the industry and U.S. economy. Uber CEO Travis Kalanick, who had joined Trump's business advisory team, resigned after facing a wave of anger from his employees and users. Now we've just heard what CEOs have to say, but what are their companies doing in practical terms to fight this order? Well, one of the first steps has been to raise money in order to fight this order in courts. Um, around 1,000 employees of Twitter raised around 1.5 million euros, which, will, which have been donated to the American Civil Liberties Union, which is challenging this order in federal courts. Something similar happened to the ride-hailing service uh, Lyft, uh, whose founders pledged uh, around $1 million for uh, fighting against this order over the period of four years. So this has been the first step. Of course, otherwise there have been demonstrations, as we saw uh, with... Uh, one, one of Google's uh, co-founders, Sergey Brin, he personally was present at the San Francisco airport uh, joining the protesters against this order. Uh, around, I think, 2,000 Google employees also staged a walkout protest to demonstrate against this order. And now, really quickly, some companies are thinking about relocating to Vancouver. That's right. No matter what the situation is, there's always an opportunity. So a few ent entrepreneurs have now uh, initiated this idea of providing service in which uh, H1B visa holder, they can re uh, relocate to Vancouver. So in essentially you have to pay uh, $6,000 in which you're given a ticket to Vancouver, a couple of nights of accommodation, and you get to meet a top uh, immigration uh, consultant. There you can, you also get access to paperwork that will help you in the eventuality of you getting affected or the person getting affected by the overall of uh, the visa program. They can relocate to Vancouver, provided, of course, the company that is the employer has a subsidiary in Vancouver and the person has a valid H-1B visa. So all this could also benefit Canada. Thank you so much, Dan. We're going to move on now to Test24. The Scandinavian furniture brand Milibu has come out with a mirror, and not just any mirror. It's essentially an interactive multimedia platform that executes some routine works of your smartphone without touching it. Dan, tell us more about this mirror. As is you mentioned, it indeed the smartest mirror there is on the market? In general, I don't like watching mirrors, but uh, it shows you the reality. Anyway, <laughs> so this mirror is a smart mirror because you can control it using hand gestures. 
So you just have to swipe the hand either left side or left uh, on the right side and you can change different things. So for example, on this mirror, you can play music, you can play YouTube videos. So the, the size of the video is around the size of the tablet, which is quite impressive. Also, you have other functionalities like for kids, uh, you have a chronometer, a timer for brushing teeth or for taking a shower. So all in all, it's a compact mirror. Of course, you have to need, you need, a, you need to plug it in to make it work. And it can also remember the preferences of each family member. Exactly. For every personal, every uh, profile, it has those preferences. So if you register your profile, you have a certain taste for music, then you can just go back and play that music. Now you have two other gadgets uh, on set. One of them is a projector made out of cardboard. How does it work? Well, it's a similar principle as Google Cardboard. You don't need any battery. There's no need for an ex external power. It's very simple to, to build. Uh, it's made out of cardboard. All you have to do is just put your smartphone here. There's, an, there's a sticky surface here, as you can see. And you just close this, and you put your smartphone on. But in order for this to operate, you have to be in a dark room. Right now, you won't be able to see uh, the projection. So here you have an adjustable lens with a ring, so it's really simply, everything is simplified. So here you just have to adjust the ring in order to adjust the, the distance of projection. Right. So you want, if you want it closed, you move the ring and, and the other way around. So this is a projector made by a French startup called uh, Gyrotech. And uh, it also has another device, which is an, um, an evolved avatar of this projector. Right. So this version is, is better. It's convenient when you're traveling. And this other version that you're just going to show us is more for... It's more conventional. It, okay. You need uh, an electri electricity source. You also here have USB. It's more compact. And this, as you mentioned, this you can go anywhere with camping. No need for electricity. While in this uh, version, you need a power source. And what are the prices? Well, this comes around uh, 39 euros, and this is, I think, uh, 50 euros more than uh, the, and the basic a, gyros. There's a gyrotech. better quality also on, on the yeah. prototype. Thank you so much, Dan. Well, that's it from us here at Tech24, but do stay tuned to France 24.